You may not hear it at first, but it's there. Echoing against limestone, drifting through the grove. You can feel it running deep beneath all that we are and do. More than a show of spirit, it's a source of energy. You can see it power leaders, fuel innovators, push dreamers into motion. On this summit, callings converge. Voices unify into a chorus, one that sounds out for good, for greatness. Our chant. Rising. Hi. Welcome, everyone, to the School of Education and Human Sciences 2021 Virtual Graduation Ceremony. My name is Rick Ginsberg. I'm the Dean of this school. I hope you're all doing well and you're staying healthy and practicing all the recommended safety techniques. I never in my life imagined I would be taping virtual graduation speeches, but here we are again, two years in a row, taping a Zoom speech for our spring virtual graduation ceremony. Thank goodness that the pandemic has eased a bit, and you all will have the opportunity tomorrow to experience a true KU face-to-face -face commencement. It won't be quite like earlier years with everyone crowded together sitting on the hill or walking down the hill, but I do hope to see you in Memorial Stadium. Although we can't greet one another today, walking across the stage at Allen Fieldhouse, I do hope you will keep the tradition alive of posting your pictures of your graduation experience to our school's Twitter account. Please be creative, take a selfie or two, and share those with us at hashtag capital K-U-S-O-E, capital G, graduation. Let's pull as much normalcy out of the current situation as we can. I can't wait to see your pictures. Again, hashtag K-U-S-O-E, graduation. I'm especially proud of you, the graduates, this year. Let's face it, all of our lives have been turned upside down and inside out these past 14 months. You know, before March 2020, the term Zoom generally referred to fast cars and rocket ships. Masks were only worn by dentists or surgeon or other health professionals or kids on Halloween. You know, the phrase, you are on mute, wasn't part of our vocabulary. And while some of you listening today may have taken some online courses before, I don't think any of you, I don't think any of us expected that we'd be going through so much online and hybrid, a hybrid teaching that dom would dominate our experiences the last couple of months. Other than your pet dog, I think who gets to see you more often, I don't think anyone has considered this past year a boon for our lives. For both students and faculty, the pandemic has taken a toll. Some of you, none of you signed up for college expecting to, expecting to be anything like it was these past 14 months. National data suggests that students report experiencing negative mental health symptoms, enduring far more screen time, losing out, of course, on campus activities with friends and clubs and sporting events, as much of the college experience that you anticipated changed. Nearly half of our students nationally report that pan the pandemic has impacted their education. Indeed, a recent article in the New York Times reported that the word to describe how so many of us are feeling right now is languishing. Maybe that applies to you as well. But guess what? Here's the good news. You all persevered. You graduate have, have displayed the grit that experts tell us is a key for experience in life. So we come together today to honor your accomplishments at KU. You should all be really, really proud of yourselves. I think about you with awe, knowing that despite all the challenges and unsettling issues that you faced, you did it. Congratulations. So with our we're so with this blue screen as our background on my Zoom, let's begin. This is the time I typically share some words of wisdom. You finish your degrees and you head out for new adventures. Honestly, finding the right words to capture these past times isn't very easy for me. Thankfully, when you register for this event, 
we asked you to share some of your favorite memories from your years as a Jayhawk. I think those words are far more fitting for today than any forgettable speech I might provide. So here goes. What are your favorite memories of your years at KU? A few things really stood out in what you told us. You made great friendships that you expect are going to endure. Many of your professors were there for you and guided your learning. You felt that your internships, your field experiences, study abroad opportunities, participating in research, all made your participation come alive. And you love much of the KU culture. I'm gonna share some of your comments broken into these three broad categories into groupings that include your developed friendships, your academic experiences, and the KU culture. So you for your friendships, one of you said, meeting some of my friends in the first, very first day of school, we have known each other now from the very beginning and have been fortunate enough to be placed in the same cadre. We've been lucky to have four years of college together. Another said, I love sp uh, spending what felt like 12 hours in JRP each day and being tired and goofy by the end of the day with my peers. Another said, being able to meet so many different people within my program who I've come now uh, who now become such good friends with and working with them on game days with KU and with the Kansas City Chiefs as we work together to further our career goals. Another of you said, I reap the benefit of my time with my peers and my instructors in the anatomy and dissection, anatomy dissection and observation lab. For years to come, I'll use the skills and knowledge that I learned there. I could go on. One last person said, one of my favorite memories is getting to meet the friends I did. I wouldn't have been able to have the experience I did without them. They truly have become my family. In terms of academic experiences, many of you commented on your study abroad time in places including Italy and New Zealand and South Korea and Costa Rica and Australia. Lots of you highlighted your internships or student teaching placements as helping you apply what you had learned in your classroom to the fields that you intend to pursue after you graduate. And you commented on the support that your profess professors uh, provided. Here are a few of, the, of your comments related to your academic experiences. One of you said, I enjoyed volunteering at the Boys and Girls Club for my cultural diversity class. Another of you said, I had an amazing opportunity in my internship to serve as an assistant coach at another university. Another of you said, having professors who were so passionate about their work and teaching and made classes much more interesting and enjoyable. So another said, I enjoyed the opportunity to experience working in different schools and in different school districts over the past couple of years. One more of you said, I enjoyed being able to participate in research studies. They get, gave me the chance to work closely with professors and with other students while giving me an opportunity to see the things I was learning in action. I think perhaps the most relevant statement was this one in this area. Faculty were very passionate and easy to reach out to when I needed help. My professors altered their courses to fit online learning and were very understanding during COVID. It is not exactly how I envisioned my last year at KU, but my experience helped me grow and realize how the class of 21, 2021 was incredibly resilient. I agree with that. Finally, your comments in the area of the KU and School of Ed Education and Human Sciences culture. My favorite memory you said was walking to class on, a, on our beautiful campus. Another said, I loved hanging out with new friends, attending social events like late night at the fog and grocery bingo. Another said, I loved joining incredible organizations like student ambassadors and my sorority. Someone else said, being a part of the marching Jayhawks. Another memory was I will always cherish the games at Allen Fieldhouse, as well as late nights in Anschutz Library. Still another of you said, I will never forget storming Massachusetts Street after we made the final four freshman year. And finally, one of you said, late night library sessions that in the end ended up being pizza parties. I could go on and on. I think you get the point. You shared wonderful memories that clearly changed your life will be with you forever, and hopefully will serve you well as you move on to the next phase of your career and life.
Before I close, I just want you to grasp all of you've experienced. It's really incredible. You know, historically in our country, there is one day, one decade with a nickname, one decade. You probably all know what it is. It's the Roaring Twenties, but they're not talking about the 2020s. They were talking about the 1920s. The 1920s certainly started off with a bang. 1920 was the year women got the right to vote. 1920 was the year that prohibition commenced. 1920 was the year that the U.S. at that time experienced its worst terrorist, terrorist attack in its history, where an explosion on Wall Street killed 38 people. That was the year that the League of Nations was formed with the lofty goal of ending war forever. You can even argue that mass media started in 1920 as the first commercially licensed radio station began uh, broadcasting live results of, believe it or not, the presidential election that year. The transmission of breaking news and events was brand new and could really be argued it was truly the beginning of American social media. But even with all of that, with all of that, I would argue that 2020 started with a louder roar than 1920. The pandemic, as you all know, has completely unsettled every aspect of our lives. We'll all be talking about this pandemic in future generations much as our elders talked about the depression. I don't know what the current decade will be labeled, but I don't think roaring is gonna be a strong enough term. But the good news, the great news, is that you all have a hand in shaping what our world is gonna be like going forward and fostering your own personal success as you move on to new experiences. You sure have proven yourselves, as indicated by one of your colleagues, to be a resilient and successful bunch. The great French poet and novelist Victor Hugo described, what the, described the future in a way that I think is apt to what's going on today. Hugo said this, the future has many names. For the weak, it means the unattainable. For the fearful, it means the unknown. But for the courageous, it means opportunity. You have proven yourselves to be among the most courageous J KU Jayhawks in the history of this great university. Take what you've learned, continue to be courageous, and take advantage of your opportunities. Soar into the future as only Jayhawks can. Rock Chalk. Each year, faculty in the School of Education and Human Sciences nominate and select seniors who have demonstrated exceptional leadership during their undergraduate studies. It's my pleasure to announce the Senior Leadership Awards for the School of Education and Human Sciences. Sanam Marie Biesenson, Exercise Science. Sophia Cohen, Secondary English Education. Erin Cole, Sport Management. Morgan Couch, Sport Management. Melanie Keith, Unified Early Childhood Education. Sarah Kettering, Sport Management. Kira McCauley, Elementary Education. Arden Rogers, Exercise Science. Kier Rudolph, Elementary Education. Megan Skozek, Secondary English Education. Congratulations to our Senior Leadership Award winners. I would now like to take a moment to say how excited we are that we have changed our name from the School of Education to the School of Education and Human Sciences because we are now recognizing in our name our students and graduates outside the field of education. For our undergraduates, that includes our sport management graduates, our exercise science graduates, and our community health graduates. Each year, the School of Education and Human Sciences faculty select a speaker to speak on behalf of the undergraduate students. Our speaker this year is graduating from one of our teacher education programs. It's my pleasure to introduce Kier Rudolph, the undergraduate speaker for 2021. 
Hello, graduates, faculty, family, friends, and everyone watching today. If there is one common theme that I can take from my time in the School of Education and Human Sciences is that change is something inevitable. Today, we graduate from the School of Education and Human Sciences. When most of us here entered the program, it was simply known as the School of Education. When I first heard of this, I wondered, human sciences, why make that change? We already had a good enough name, the School of Education. That's what I do, I educate. It was simple, clean, and crisp. Every time I walked past the building, I would shout, the S-O-E. I really did, I know. And yeah, it's corny, but I liked it. But then I realized something. It isn't all about me. I began to see that while we as teachers educate and do so much more than that, there are others within education that do even more. While they may not teach math in the classroom, they provide emotional support for the student who is crying in their office. Counselors are the loving and caring people that funnel students to each classroom based on need and personality fit. Principals use restorative practices to absolve harm instead of punitive punishments. School psychologists provide mental health services to build up students mentally, socially, and emotionally. Physical education teachers provide students with lifelong knowledge of what it means to have a healthy body and how to take care of it. Occupational therapists, behavior specialists, speech pathologists, the list goes on and on. The many roles that make up an education are endless. And when I think of this, I am reminded of how vast the educational network is and the pivotal roles that make it up. And those people deserve recognition in the school that they attend. And that name change itself helps shift my view on what it means to provide a child with a well-rounded, and just education. But change also goes so much deeper than a name change at your university. One morning, you come into your classroom and you're told for the first time that you have a new student whose first language is not your own. Or you find out that your district is restructuring the curriculum and every resource you spend gathering the previous year will no longer directly apply. Your principal switches you from fifth grade to kindergarten, or you are the principal switches somebody from fifth grade to kindergarten. The art and the music budget gets slashed again, and now you need to work with fewer materials again, or you come out, you come out of your own pocket again, just so your students receive everything they deserve. And in some special cases, an unexpected virus makes its way through the world and sends us home to teach for a year. It may seem that change can't possibly come with any kind of silver lining. It's annoying, not what we're used to doing, and it takes us out of our comfort zone. However, when we look a little closer, we can realize that change always provides the opportunity to shake something up and try something new. Sometimes change serves as reminding us that we do more than just educate. I know now and understand that it takes more than just me, but every person watching this screen and those not to help our students effectively become whatever they choose to be. Now, we all have our reasons for becoming educators. An educator as we were growing up inspired us in a way so that we wanted to inspire others. Some may have had educators remind us of all the ways we don't want to treat our youth. And some, some just really like the pay. Whatever your reasoning may be, the changes we experience can always be the catalyst to put words to action and transform our schools into the spaces we know can fit all of our students' needs. The system needs it. And I can't think of any other group of people that have the resiliency, 
compassion, empathy, and tenacity to provide their students nothing but the best, despite what others may do to stifle it. And as I thought further into how much change impacts us within a year or on a day-to-day -day basis, I realized that at the same time, we are the change. We are the change makers, the innovators. We determine how we will guide our students down the path to a proper education. We've had all the discussions and we've been in the focus groups. We've done all of the readings, maybe. I know some of us here. But I do know that we all know the problems that our schools face, and only we know how we can change them. It looks different for everyone. Whether you're handing out family food bags, advocating for better classroom funding, or simply telling a student that you're happy to see them today, we know how we can make our own individual splash to change the status quo in the way things work. I would be lying if I said it would be easy and that our careers will play out just like a Hollywood movie where an educated, where a motivated educator walks into the building and transforms the lives of students with nothing but a plucky attitude and the power of belief. And yes, we do all love a plucky teacher. It will take more than that. There will be days where we feel we chose the wrong profession, where we feel unsupported and that the fight isn't worth it anymore. And if I'm being honest, those are fair feelings to have, especially in our education professions. And when that happens, don't hesitate to take a break and fill your cup because we can't give to others when we neglect ourselves. But as soon as you recharge and put back on the many various hats we educators wear, remember that nobody can do it like we can. And that Jayhawks are not only built for change, but we create it wherever we go. And when graduation is over, the screens go blank, and we all continue our journeys and take our places in this fight of public education, remember that you are not alone and that you're surrounded by educators doing their part to create the educational network that will support all of our students, no matter what condition we receive them in. Just know that our connections, yours and I's, will be a lot stronger and a lot more brighter in rain or shine or pandemic, because our connections are made up of that royal blue and that oh so very beautiful crimson red shout out crimson rock chalk thank you i will now introduce dr kelly thomas associate dean for teacher education undergraduate programs dr thomas will present the undergraduate student degree recipients i'm kelly thomas Associate Dean for Teacher Education and Undergraduate Studies. I'm pleased to present the graduates from the School of Education and Human Sciences undergraduate programs. I will now announce the transition to post-secondary education certificate recipients. Emily Kaus. Carly Faith Lavoie. I will now announce the bachelor's degree recipients from the Department of Curriculum and Teaching. Haley Adams. Samantha Albright. Adriana Aikenman. Meredith Kate Arbelize. Melissa Barbarina. Mackenzie Joe Beheimer. Emily Bjorlin. Colette Ann Block. Callie 
Bow. Allison Borso. Faith Bradfield. Connie Cobb. Sophia Blue Cohen. Amy Juanita Curiel. Sydney Dykehouse. Natalie Grace Fanella. Jenna L. Fingerman. Sienna Ford Johnson. Hannah Funk. Alexandra Day Firminger. Kaylee Guerreri. Sydney Hall. Jenna Hawks. Abby Hedrick. Sarah Hennessy. Eva Herling. Jacqueline Hockenberg. Sierra Johnson. Sydney Johnson. Bree Kasirik. Melanie Keith. Rachel Kettering. Kyle Matthew Kobe. Abby Crusoe. Danielle Larson. Sophie Levine. Marin Jordan Lilly. Natalie Marie Lyne. Kylie Lowen. Madeline Martin. Jackson McCauley. Kira McCauley. Ryland Grace McClave. Nina Elisa Morales. Tamara Morgan. Grace Evelyn Nielsen. Madeline Neiman. Benjamin Novor. Bill Vernell Patterson. Cassie Quinones. Reagan Rapp. Vanessa Christine Riza. Sophia Roland. Gabrielle Rossetti. Pierre Rudolph. Grace Schlegel. Hannah Gail Shepherd. Claire Sizemore. Megan Skozek. Mia Spano. Maddie Urish. Megan Van Giesen. Anna Votes. Lily Webster. Megan Wickinson. Sydney Winter. Sarah Wright. Ashley Yoder. Yike Zen. 
I will now announce the bachelor's degree recipients from the Department of Health, Sport, and Exercise Sciences. Jelani Arnold. Zaina Azar. Apriana Berkowitz. Sanam Bizenson. Maya Bilski. Dalton Blaine. Anissa Elise Brantley. Megan Bridget Carney. Aaron Cole. Shayla Collins. Morgan Ann Couch. Savannah Cox. Madison Dolan. Andrew Bennett Edrington. Sheza Faruqi. Courtney Getz. Cassie Grattan. Lauren Green. Nicholas Hartig. Hannah Heaton. Jacqueline Hitt. Zachary Hopp. Carter Ison. Caitlin Jors. Wesley L. Jones. Peyton Kelly. Sarah Kettery. Marissa Kin. Iboya Villancy Concoli. Michaela Langdon. Nicholas Alexander Leahy. Callie Kathleen Linens. Emma Lovelace. Sarah Molikoff. Madison Manchi McMillan. Jake Massick. Nolan Metcalf. Sophie Neal. Jason Patrick Ondroff. Enrique Manuel Ortiz. Haley Patterson. Olivia Peshek. Peyton Price. Hannah Premick. Maya Pumphrey. Tanner Wesley Reed. Arden Claire Rogers. Savannah Sheehan Brighton. Ryan Andrew Stephen. Courtney Danielle Skillerin. Catherine Marie Smith. Jordan J. Tarones. Lauren Trocht. Hunter Votes. Rachel Witt. Ben Youngmark. Congratulations to our graduates. Rock Chalk. Now, please join us in singing KU's alma mater. Yeah. 
ladies and gentlemen, please join in the singing of our alma mater.